Hello and welcome to my channel. So today, today is going to be a little questionable, but I've been practicing, okay? So basically what I want to do is talk to you about how to fake a bad English accent. Not a good one. Keep that in mind, all right? So the first thing I want to talk about, we're going to be talking about letters. So the first letter I want to talk about is the letter R. Now, Americans pronounce the R's in all the words that they say. But in England, for some reason, sometimes the R's do not exist. I don't know where they go, but poof, they're gone. So let me tell you what I'm talking about. When there's a word and the end of the word ends in R, it's just not there anymore. For example, the word letter. When I say the word letter, do you hear the R? Because I don't. Do you? There's no R. It's spelled with an R for sure, but there is no R. So you just say letter. Same thing with the word better. There's just, you just take the R, poof, gone. Where does it go? Nobody knows. I think it goes with all of our lost socks that we've washed, you know, that just disappear somewhere in a parallel universe. The R's from England are floating around with the socks. Anyways, moving on. R also doesn't appear to be pronounced if it, fall, if it comes before a consonant. And here's what I'm talking about. Let's say the American word start, right? You can hear the R, but when I say it with my bad English accent, it's now start. It's like S-T-A-H-T, -T, start. There's no R. Where'd the R go? I don't know. I don't know. But there is no more R. Now, there are exceptions to this rule. There are exceptions to every rule I'm about to tell you. But keep in mind, to get a quick lesson in making a bad English accent, you have to get rid of the R at the end of a word and the R if it goes right before a consonant. Next word I want to talk about, or next letter I want to talk about is the letter A. Now, in America, they pronounce A quite differently than in England. For example, and. In American, and has an, an like a long, like a, like a long A, right? But when you say it with a bad English accent, it is now aunt. It's like, you put an extra H in there, right? So it's A-H-N-D. So it's aunt. Me and you. You and me, right? Not you and me. It's you and me. You and me. And we're going to go on and talk about A's in another way too. When we're talking about A's, let's, let's practice with the word car, right? Americans say car. They use the A and the R quite differently. When I say it with a bad English accent, it is now the same thing that a crow says, which is car. Do you want to go for a ride in my car, right? Where'd the A go? It went long. So it's now R ah, instead of A, it's R. Ah. Where's the R? Ah? I don't know. But now that one word has two significant changes. And this is why I personally find it difficult to keep an accent going for a long period of time. Think of it this way, right? Say you have a pitcher of water, right? And you have a cup and you're pouring the water into the cup. If you're talking in the way you normally talk, your normal voice, it's like it flows just beautifully, right? Just a beautiful flow of water. But when your brain is trying to change the way you talk, now that water has to go through a filter. So your brain is processing all these words 
as it comes out and goes into the cup. So it's taking a little bit more time and effort to get down into the cup. So it's not quite that beautiful flow, right? The only way I can say to get the flow to look the same with a pitcher and with a filter is practice. Practice, 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 right? Listen closely, immerse yourself in the accent that you want to try to do. Um, one more letter I want to talk about in this video is T. Now, I always wondered as an American myself, why is it that sometimes we pronounce the word T like D? For example, like I just talked about, right? Water. We would say it in a bad British accent as water, right? Long A, no R, but we pronounce that T, don't we? But an American, we say water with a D and there's an R for sure, right? Why? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why, but your brain has to think of all these changes as you're talking. And that is why I am not good at it. <laughs> So we've got car, which has got two changes. We've got water, which has got technically three changes. We've got the A that sounds different. We're pronouncing the T now and the R just left town for some reason. I don't know why. Um, next, I want to talk to you about the glottal, the glottal pause. You might be thinking, what is the glottal pause? Well, in a nutshell, Basically what it is, is you're kind of pausing like a mini pause in the middle of a word. So if we take the word British, right? We're saying, we're saying British like they do, but we put a little pause in the middle and now it's British. It's like we took a T out, right? So we could say British or we could say British. When you say it with the pause in the middle, it sounds more different than the American accents. Now, not all British people say it that way. It's a regional thing, okay? Think of the States, right? East Coast sounds very different than West Coast, correct? And then the South sounds very different than the North. And a lot of people that try to fake an American accent that, that, that aren't actors, right? They're just trying to do it. They take the most uh, different sounding way and they usually do Southern because Southern accents are kind of the most, I don't know, outlandish maybe. The same thing can be said about England because it's regional, smaller than the States, I think, but it's regional. So someone from Manchester is going to sound completely different than someone from London. And the same can be said for Sussex. And then there's a whole nother country called Wales. My accent, I have no idea what it is. People have told me it sounds Irish, Australian, English, rubbish. <laughs> but my point is that if you want to try to get a bad English accent quickly, these are my four, my four tips, okay? R's. At the end, forget it. Before a consonant, sometimes forget about it, right? Start your car. Start your car, right? A's. A's sound differently now. A's have an H sometimes in them. Can, con, and, on, right? T's. Always pronounce your T's. No matter where they are in the, in, the, in the word, you pronounce those T's. They are not D's and I still don't understand why Americans make it that way. Water? Water is not water. <laughs> it's water. There's no, there's no R. Ah. Don't know why. There's definitely a T for sure. I, I am quite certain of that. And then the glottal pause. And that's, you know, 
question. It, it, that's a uh, dealer's choice if you want to use it or not. British, better, um, letter, letter, that kind of thing. And then, if you really want to drive it home, you use words that Americans don't, right? So instead of saying something like, my mom, you would say, me mom, right? That's how they say it. Some of them, not all of them. I'm not trying to be stereotypical. I'm not trying to hurt anyone's feelings here. I'm just saying this is how I do a bad British accent. Um, if you are just, what, how did they say that? Um, if you're just like taken aback, right? You're absolutely gutted, 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 gutted. You could do it with the global polls or not. I would say gutted. I'm absolutely gutted by what you just said to me. I am taken aback. Um, we, they don't say that in America, you know? There's quite a lot of things. Also, instead of saying pharmacy or the drugstore, I believe they say the chemist. The chemist? When you think of chemist in America, you think of like, like school or I don't know, like a factory or something. Also, they don't say college. They say uni, as in university, but they say uni. <laughs> so, remember your letters, R, A, T. R decides it wants to or does not want to appear in a word. A sounds quite different, and T is always pronounced. Remember your glottal pause, right? You just kind of stop in the middle of a word. If it's got double T's, just take a T out. Better is now better, you know? And then throw in some slang words that Americans won't use. And you too can have a bad English accent. Now, if you want to learn how to do a real authentic sounding accent, this is not the video. There are very many videos out there for that but that's not why we're here that's no fun <laughs> anyways I only did this video because some people in my comment section said they liked British Tiffany I don't know if she'll be coming back anytime soon uh I know it can be quite annoying <laughs> I practice a lot believe it or not in my car by myself around my husband who doesn't like it at all <laughs> and uh yeah so i thought i'd give it a shot and try to teach you how to do it as well how do you think i sound on a scale of one to ten would you say one being the worst rubbish rubbish okay just saying we don't say that too much in america but one being absolutely rubbish ten being brilliant Brilliant is kind of different in America. Uh, tell me where I rate. I'd love it for you to judge me on this. <laughs> Anyways, I love each and every one of you. Thank you so much for putting up with my weirdness, my randomness, and all the crazy shenanigans I do on my channel. I hope you learned something today. I hope I didn't kill your brain cells listening to this nonsense. And I will see you guys next time. Well, I won't, but American Tiffany will. I love you guys so much. Thank you for putting up with this and I will see you guys again. Bye-bye. Or should I say cheers? What do they say when they say goodbye? I don't know. Titus, help me in this video. Just look at my dog. Isn't he cute? Okay, bye.